There is basically two ways to read the state of a certain pin. It is by polling or by using interrupts. In the previous tutorial for GPIO, we learned how to read the current state of a certain pin. We used the boot switch as an input device. We learned that in order to read the current state of a switch, first we need to import the machine module using import machine. Then we create the switch object and use the machine.pin and connect it to GPIO0 for the boot switch. And we set the pin direction using the machine.pin in because this is an input after that one we can use the sw.value function to get the current state or value of the switch like this one currently it is logic one when we press the boot switch while sending the sw sw.value we get logic zero and when we release the switch and we check again, it goes back to logic one. Now, let's create the example number one. In this example, we will use the polling method of getting the status of the switch. Let me first import the machine. Let's also import the time that we will be used for the delays and let's create the LED object which is connected to GPIO2 and let's set the pin direction of the LED as output then let's create the switch object SW connected to GPIO 0 as machine.pin.in that that as an input. Let us create a main loop here using a while while loop while loop and let's check if the switch that value is equal equal to zero if zero it means it is pressed I want if the switch is pressed I want the onboard LED to blink seven times if you can remember uh, our example in the previous tutorial which is the blink LED n times we use these parameters num t on uh, t off and message we create an internal variable counter initialized to zero and using a while loop we loop using while counter is less than to the input number then we turn on the LED LED that on we wait using time that is sleep using the T on parameters then we turn off the LED and we stay turn off for sometime using the T off then we can increment the counter variable using counter plus equal one when we exit the while loop we print the input message msg now we can use the blink led n times function here so let's say I want to blink LED n times for seven times. It will stay on for let's say 250 milliseconds. It stays up for 500 
milliseconds and it will print a message done when it is complete okay let's save this one save in the computer I will save it as T004 or tutorial 04 and as an example 01 let's name it as simple polling dot python pi let's run it as of now it seems nothing is happening but in the background in microcontrollers internal processes the microcontroller is continuously monitoring the state of the switch so that in the event that we press the switch the program action will be executed so let's say i press the boot switch it should print uh, it should blink the onboard led for seven times press one two three then it sends a message done let's try again press the boot switch one two three four five six seven and it sends the message done by continuously monitoring the state of a certain microcontroller's pin which is a polling method we are putting the microcontroller to unnecessary waste of power especially in battery operated applications interrupt is especially useful for initiating a certain action whenever a button switch is pressed without the need of constantly checking the state of the said pin in python interrupt handlers is called callback function also known as interrupt service routine or isr in layman's term it is a function being called when the interrupt is triggered. To easily understand interrupt handlers or callback functions, let's create a simple code to demonstrate it. Let's say I want to toggle the onboard LED whenever I press the boot switch. First, let's import the machine. Then let's create the LED and switch object. LED connected to machine that pin to machine that pin that out and the switch in machine that sorry machine that pin GPIO zero machine that pin that in as an input for the LED and switch respectively. Now in order to use interrupts for the switch object, we will use the IRQ method of the pin class of machine module. So that is SW.IRQ. Then we will set the trigger edge for the interrupt trigger is equal to machine that pin that IRQ polling and the other is IRQ rising this boot switch is designed with pull up resistor to 3.3 volts so it is always logic high when the switch is not pressed the moment we press the boot switch it will be connected to the ground which is a logic low so in our case we will be using the IRQ polling now let's set the callback function or the function that will be called when interrupt happened it is handler is equal to let's give the name of the function handler or callback function handler as handle interrupt 
close it. Then, we will create the callback function here. So, that is def or define handle interrupt interrupt the callback function should take only one argument which is a pin instance inside the handle interrupt callback function we will just toggle the value of the led by led that value is not led that value like that let's save it in, in the computer let's call it t004 underscore e 0 to uh, simple interrupt okay dot python and let's run it run the current script or f5 now let's press the switch as you can see whenever i press the switch it will toggle the state of the led as of now the onboard led is on when i press the switch it should toggle now up now on now up okay now let's demonstrate another example i prepared here a dc motor with l298 driver i also connected a limit switch that will simulate for both sides this one and this one are the limit switch so that we can change the dc motor rotation also, let me briefly discuss the source code. So, in here, first, we load or we import the machine module. Then, we create the SW1 and SW2 object as a switch input. DR1 and DR2 or drive output. Here, we define a callback function to handle the interrupt. So, we use a global keyword in order to access the global variable. So that was for IRQ pin and for the press variable. And when an interrupt is triggered, we set the press variable as true. And the IRQ pin is parsed from the pin instance. This code basically parses the exact pin number of the pin being triggered by the interrupt. In here, we attach the interrupts to object SW1 and SW2 switches. And as you may observe, they are sharing the same handler function. And we are using a polling edge for the interrupt here we create eternal loop using a while true and we check if the switch is pressed because here we set if any of the switch is pressed we set the press variable as true then we print the pin number of the uh, interrupt the triggered then we set the press variable to false again so that it will not enter again to this if statement. Next, we check if the IRQ pin is equal to 15. It means it is a counterclockwise direction. If the pin is GPIO 21 that triggered the IRQ or the interrupt, we change the direction to clockwise direction. Else, we just pass. Now, let's test this code. 
by pressing the run button, run the current script. And when I press left button, this one, the DC motor should rotate counterclockwise like this. And when I press this button, the second button, it should change the direction of rotation like that. Or, or, so, and you may also observe here in the shell that when I press uh, the left button, it will says 15 counter. It because now it is rotating counterclockwise. So when I press the other side, it should say the pin. It's in pin 21 and it's rotating clockwise. Let me press again the counterclockwise. Let me reset first. That's enough for now. If you have any question regarding this tutorial, you may write your inquiry in the comment box provided. And if you enjoyed this video, please give me thumbs up by clicking the like button and share this to your friends so that it can reach more people who might benefit from this. And if you are not yet subscribed, please do subscribe now. You might also like to visit my blog post at techtotinker.blogspot.com for more details and references such as circuit diagram and source code. Thank you and have a good day ahead. See you in the next video.